All right, peace. This is Brother I Tim coming at you once again. Uh, one of those random thoughts, random thoughts. So now, one of the things that I'm running in and I'm in dealing with with my folks, um, that's that's really, uh, I can almost say sad because you know those of you that that follow, y'all know I just did one on uh, um, do a stout wilt. Um, I think I call it do a stout wilt. Uh, Illuminati, Golden Dawn, and black, black, black people, right? Um, and in in a culture where individuals are doing what they want, I already stress the fact that they are based is based on the individual, right? So let's go a little bit into. It. Let's look into that a little bit, because it's like uh, people aren't repping their names, right? They're not repping their names. See. Because when we look at how names are, in some cultures, the last name will come first. Well, we consider the last name will come first because the last name identifies the group that you are from. Where people will be able to look, listen to your name and understand through your name who you were. You know what I'm saying? The type of, the type of people you came from. Then after that, your individual name will be spoken, right? But now we got the first name. And the last name. In most cases, the first name is now the most important. I'm going to tell you, we're going to get to why that's a detriment. But your name connects you to something bigger. Your name is supposed to connect you to something bigger. Like, So we got two parts of our name. The last name connects you to a larger group. That larger group connects you to a larger people. That larger people connects you to a larger being or larger ancestors. And those ancestors connect you to a creator. All right, so do your last name. It shows your connection all the way back through time to something greater than yourself on three levels at least. The level of uh, a group, the levels of the, 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 um, the, the group that your group belongs to, your ancestors, all those that have passed on and laid the foundation and used that last name, and lastly, your connection to the creator. Now, the first name is in a sense your individuality, right? Which is important because that in individuality that's within you moves that name towards a higher stratum in the physical world. So it's like uh, as an individual, this is what you contributed to the greater whole. But now the first name has become important because now it's, it's, it's like it's all about me. It's all about ego. Do as thou wilt, right? This is the piece that a lot of us are not catching. We are living what's we are living all the stuff, all the conspiracies that people are talking about. We are in the midst of living it. Many of us have not ha have dropped our last name and have totally become our first names. Many of us dropped the last name totally, and people only know us by our first name, right? And I'm going to tell you, I'm we're going to get to where they get to, gets us to. So the first name is personal, at least in our culture. The last name connects you to a family and tribe and builds up. Today. People only rep their first name. Um, the last name has no meaning, right? Because in a society where you're doing as you will or in an area where you're doing as you will or in the people where you're doing as you will, the, we have no connection. We have no connection to the past because our last name connects us to history, right? So now, as a people, our history has already been decimated. Right. Even though we got all these people pulling it back up, our, 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 our history has been decimated and it's been decimated to such a point that now we don't even connect with the last names because the last names really, when it comes down to it, the last names are the remnants of slavery for a, for a majority of us. So we don't try to connect with those, but we don't even realize that those are in a sense, still a connection to some type of past. So we totally dropped them and we only go on by the first name. Now, in our community, we could just totally drop the last name. And the most important thing about us now is basically our social security number. So people don't even have to identify you. And this is just not for the black community. Y'all need to really look at this um, um, nation, nationwide. Your name is not even necessary no more. You are a number, right? And being a number, you become a product, right? You become a widget. Because there is no humanity in you because you're just 
a thing that's being counted. And, and, and some of us are manifesting in the areas where we live that nothingness, right? That lack of humanity, right? So now we go into it. So now that last name connects us to something bigger. It connects us to a high, to a higher, to a higher sort of connects us to, uh, our, our, it connects us to who we are as human beings, right? As human and the being, it connects us to our spirituality. It connects us to our ancestor. It connects us to our creator, right? But we, we totally discarded that, right? And now we have young people who will come into public places and because they have not established or have not been given an, a connection to who they are, they act any way. Right? They act how they want to act. Right? And then you got the parents coming in defending how they're acting. Because the parents no longer know. Right? Parents don't even know. You see what I'm saying? So it's like you got total disconnection. So you got kids coming into places. I ain't talking about all kids. But you you have some young people go to a place, raise hell. Right? And the parent will come in and defend the fact that the child is raising hell. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you something like this. My child don't do this at home, which which is a warning sign because this is the issue. If the child does not do it at home, why is the child doing it in a place, in a public place? Now, if the parent has never noticed this behavior at home, this is telling you that the child is acting out consciously. At least that's what it tells me. I, I could be wrong, right? So, But like I said, when I hear that, the child don't act like this at home. And I'm seeing repeated behaviors over and over again. What this is telling me is that this child is making a conscious choice. So now I got to figure out why this child is making a conscious choice. But as I'm looking at it overall as a community, we have disconnected ourselves totally from our history. Not just, not just ancient history, but recent history. You know what I'm saying? What does it mean to be a Williams? What does it mean to be a Brown? What does it mean to be a Thomas? What does it mean? What does these names mean? What does it mean to be a Giame? Right? We have totally... Slipped into a, a, a point and a place where we don't have to have honor. Honor is not a necessary piece no more, right? It, you, it's not necessary, you know, as, as a group or as an organization or as an individual. You don't need it no more because it's, it's, it's do as thou will. Because in a, in, 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 a, in, in, a, in a system where it's about doing you, when it's all about doing you, you don't have to worry about everybody else. You don't have to worry about others' opinions. You don't have to worry about other feelings. You don't have to worry about others' property. Do as you would. If you're stronger, take it. Now, I got a question. Why does that sound sort of like living in a wilderness somewhere? Right? I mean, because we, we are living in a mental wilderness right now. And until we decide that we need to kind of get out of this do as thou will and start doing as as we are supposed to, right? What and what do I mean by as we supposed to? Would the stuff that you're doing right now, right, be acceptable in your family maybe fifty years ago? Yeah, I know a lot of y'all like, oh, that's old fashioned. But in many ways, the old fashioned is what kind of keeps us safe, our culture, right? Because our names, our names are supposed to feed into our culture in a sense connect us back to our culture right <clears throat> as black people we have a certain a certain um, um vibration a certain culture that we developed coming out of our hard times a lot of people call it slave culture or whatever but the point is that that piece that we brought in slavery helped us build some great things and y'all can't be in denial now so they got tore down but the point is for some reason, because it's, it's incredible, because for some reason, after slavery, we was making great strides, right? All the way up until the 20th century, in a lot of ways, we was making great strides. We was, we, we was rising, but then something happened, right? So, um, this is Brother Hot Tim. Just another thought, another, some more food for thought, you know. Um, let me make sure I got everything. So, um, by us not plugging into who we are, us not plugging into our names, you know, we just we we disconnect ourselves from the greater. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, what I'm saying we we not only do we have blood families, but we have spiritual families. We develop um, those spiritual connections with people, 
And, and a major part of it, or at least a major part of it, of it for me was to, to develop something where I felt like I was home, away from home. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have to think about some of the stuff I do. You know what I'm saying? How would my elders that are in my adopted family look at me? How would the elders in, in my own family look at me? You know what I'm saying? How would my children look at me? Because I'm repping something. You know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and I don't want it to go negative, but you know what I'm saying? We see this in, in, in the street culture. You know what I'm saying? Because some of these kids would rep something so to such a level that it's scary, right? And it's like, where did that go? How did that get, how did that get turned from family to a gang other than those gangs becoming their family? Right. We have to build. We got to establish those institutions that our young people are willing to rep. We got to build those families that our children are um, willing to rep. And we got to start building the stories up of our families that our children want to go out and rep. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's certain things that you can say to a child like, you know, hey, we don't do that. And this is why you know what I'm saying you might need to make up some stories. But the fact is. That you need to be able to tell your child something. We don't do that. No, we don't do that. We don't. We we don't steal. You know what I'm saying? And and is I mean it's crazy to me some of the stuff that parents will come in and deny or come in to defend about their children, not realizing that the reflection, the things that these children are doing, is reflecting and telling on what's going on in the home. So I'm just saying, I'm just doing this tape to say we have to do better, all of us. We have to do better. You know what I'm saying? We have to, we have to give our children something to strive for, something um, to build towards. You know, um, uh, not only a story of the past, but a story of the future. How our ancestors built it up so that we could be in a position we are in now, so that the next generation can move us to another level. And we start putting that. I know it's a lot, but we start putting that responsibility on their shoulders so they can start thinking about it now while they're young. And if they start thinking about it now and start seeing and, and believing that it's possible, they will make the world better for us as elders. All right, but hey, this is Brother Hot Tim, and I'm out.